in this video we are going to discuss recovery from deadlock so let's say a deadlock detection algorithm was run and it was found out that processes p1 p2 p3 are in a deadlock so how can we recover from this deadlock one of the ways of handling this is process termination so there are two ways in which process termination can be done either we abort all deadlocked processes so in this case all processes p1 p2 p3 which were involved in the deadlock all of these will be aborted but the problem is that these processes may have computed for a long time let's say p1 had already finished 90% of its tasks p2 had finished 50% of its computations and p3 had finished 60% of its computations so now all these processes have computed for a long time and aborting them would be expensive and the results of all these partial com computations will have to be discarded another way of handling it, it is to abort one process at a time until the deadlock cycle is eliminated so out of these deadlocked processes one process will be chosen to be aborted and after it has been aborted then again a deadlock detection algorithm will be invoked to check whether the remaining processes are deadlocked or not if the deadlock is still existing then again another process will be chosen so let's say first we had these three processes p1 p2 and p3 in a deadlock so initially let's say p2 has been chosen to be aborted so once p2 has been aborted again the deadlock detection algorithm will run to check whether p1 and p3 are still in a deadlocked state or not if they are not in a deadlocked state then it is okay but if they are in a deadlocked state again out of these processes p1 and p3 again one process will be chosen and so on now that means that after each process is aborted this deadlock detection algorithm has to be invoked so this incurs considerable overhead because every time a process is being aborted a detection algorithm has to be invoked to check for deadlock now if a process is terminated there are various situations in which a process might be when it was terminated there is a possibility that the process was in the middle of updating a file and now terminating that process may leave the file in an incorrect state there is another possibility that the process was in the middle of updating shared data while holding a mutex locks so now if this particular process is terminated then the system must restore the status of the lock as now available and there is no guarantee on the integrity of the shared data because in the middle of updating this shared data the process has now been aborted now if we use the method of partial termination that means we are terminating only one process at a time so out of all the deadlocked processes we have to determine that which deadlocked process should be terminated and the strategy would be to abort that process or those processes first whose termination will incur the minimum cost so what do we understand from the cost because when we are terminating a process there are various factors which are associated with it that means how much computation it had already done what is the priority of that uh, that process so for with each process there is some cost associated so how do we choose which process will be terminated so there are certain factors which we can consider and these can also contribute to the cost and these factors can help us decide which process is to abort one is the priority of a process so if there are three processes p1 p2 p3 and if the priority of process let's say p3 is the highest 
we would not want to terminate this process P3 first. We will choose a lower priority process. A second factor to consider is how long the process has computed and how much longer to completion. So let's say this has computed for 90% of the computations are over, this has done only 30% and this has done 70%, then it would make sense to choose process P2 because it has not computed as long as P1 and P3. So P2 since it has done less of computation right now and it will require longer to completion, then it makes sense to choose P2 for abortion. Then how many resources the process has used? If a particular process is using more number of resources compared to other processes, then there is a possibility that that process can be terminated first so that it will release all those resources and those resources can be used by other processes for removal of this deadlock. Also, how many resources a process needs to complete? So, if a process now requires more number of resources, that process should be terminated first. Let's say P1 requires 10 resources, P2 requires 2 resources and P3 requires 5 resources. So, this, since P2 is requiring less number of so, uh, resources, it makes sense to uh, let this process exist and terminate process P1. So, all of these factors, priority, how much it has computed, the resources it has used and the resources it needs. All these factors they will contribute to choosing the process which has to be terminated. Another factor is, is the process interactive or a batch process? So if it's an interactive process, it will be given a higher priority and not be terminated compared to a batch process. So rather than using this strategy of process termination, there is another strategy which is resource preemption. Here we preempt resources from a process and allocate it to another process till the time the deadlock is not there. So we have let's say P1, P2 and P3 which are involved in a deadlock and now what is going to be done is that from a particular process resources are going to be preempted. So let's say P1 is using three instances of one resource type and this is using five and this is using seven and they are requiring more. So one of the processes will be preempted and its resources will be given to the other processes which are involved in the deadlock. So now how to select the victim? Now out of these processes, which process should be the victim? That means from which process the resources should be preempted. Obviously, that process which will have the minimum cost associated with it will have to be chosen. And again, to compute the cost, all these factors can be taken into account. So, whichever process is incurring the minimum cost that will be chosen and resources will be preempted from it. Now, again, there is another possible uh, thing that we need to take care of is the rollback. So, let's say uh, resources have been preempted from process P3. So, if P3 resources have been preempted, that means now the process has to return to be to some previous safe state. Since this was already computing, it has reached a certain state it has to be rolled back now to some previous safe state and then whenever it starts computation next, it will start from that particular state. Now, when we do this resource preemption, there is a possibility that the same process may always be picked up as a victim. Now, let us say P1 and P2 and P3 were in a deadlock and P3 was chosen as a victim process and its resources were preempted. After some time, 
let's say P3, P4 and P5 are in a deadlock and again P3 is chosen to be the victim process and its resources are preempted again and given to other process. So this is going to cause some starvation that means every time the same process is picked up as victim it will not be able to execute, it will not be able to compute. So this should not be done, it should be avoided. So it's always a better idea to include the number of rollbacks also as the cost factor. So when we are considering all these factors while computing the cost, then the number of times a process has been rolled back should also be considered. So if P3 has been rolled back once over here and another one over here, so the, the number of times this process is being rolled back should be considered as past part of the cost and then the next time a set of processes are in a deadlock then it should be decided that if a particular process has been rolled back many number of times then it should not be chosen as a victim. So these are the two strategies of recovering from deadlock. One is the process termination and the other is the resource preemption.